3D printing the filament path. The filament path is the path in the components the filament travels through to get transformed into a 3D print. There are several components that contribute to the filament path. We start with the filament spool on which the filament is wound. The filament path is composed from the spool and the way the filament is wound on the spool. The distance and the obstacles and most importantly the resistance the filament meets from the spool to the extruder gear is pulling the filament from the spool and pushing it towards the nozzle. The extruder gears and the orifices in the extruder, the pneumatic fittings and the Bowden tube, the heat sink, the heat break throat, the heat block, the thermistor, the nozzle and the cooling. The filament is wound on a spool and if the winding is not done well then the filament loops can act as a brake and require more force from the extruder gears and or the motor. In addition, many have redesigned the filament spool holders to reduce friction. It is better to keep the spools of filament separate from the 3D printer, thus reducing the vibrations in the frame. You have tension in the filament spool from the heft of the spool, the friction of the spool on the spool holder and the filament loops locking on top of each other. The next item in the filament path is the extruder. One big issue that most filament paths have is the spring in the extruder gears. If you get a 3D printer with a single gear extruder then get a set of 3D printer bed springs and use one of them in your extruder. Moreover, it is important if the gear that grips the filament is rounded around the filament rather than straight. A straight gear has less surface of gripping the filament and a chamfered gear has more surface in gripping the filament and leaves less scrapes. Before we get to the Bowden tube you have the push fitting. Quick pneumatic fittings, 4mm M6 thread, PC4 M6 and M10. If these fittings fail or just do not grip the Bowden tube properly and the Bowden tube slides inside the fitting then it affects your 3D print. It may create under extrusion because rather than the filament traveling through the tube and getting to the nozzle the tube travels with the filament and then your nozzle may not push the filament until a second or two later, thus creating empty layer portions in your 3D print. If the push fittings are bad and fail during a 3D print and the Bowden tube is completely out of the fitting then you have a failed 3D print. I'm of the opinion to have a spare set of push fittings and maybe change them directly on your new 3D printer. The push fittings that come with some Chinese 3D printers are a disaster. Variable tension inside the Bowden tube. The Bowden tube can be regular PTFE or Capricorn tube. Everyone prefers Capricorn tube. Try to maintain the Bowden tube tensionless, without sharp turns and or narrow turns because with long retractions the filament gets scraped a lot. And the tension inside the tube builds up with scrapes and the debris they carry inside the tube. When filament gets scraped it increases the diameter thus it makes it harder for it to travel inside the Bowden tube, especially if you have a long Bowden tube for a large 3D printer. In addition the filament in the single gear extruder can be scraped more than in a dual gear extruder. Because at tension peaks coupled with long and many repeated retractions, the filament may be grinded more because it slips more. A dual gear extruder may grip the filament better and thus less filament slipping resulting in less scrapes and less debris. Also you may find a lot of brand name single gear extruders that have no rounded chamfer in the single gear for a better filament grip. Actually you may want to 3D print a drag chain and neatly organize the Bowden tube and the wires inside it. Moreover you can 3D print clips that attach the Bowden tube to the wire mesh or conduit. If your filament made it all the way to the second push fitting PC4 M10 which holds the Bowden tube tight creating a seal either with the back of the nozzle or with your heat break throat depending on the hot end style and more exactly the heat break throat style. All metal or not. In the hot end you have a few other things that can go wrong. First is the push fitting and if you see the Bowden tube slide inside the fitting you need to change the fitting. In addition the push fitting PC4 M10 can carve a channel in the exterior of the Bowden tube. This process is accelerated when you have an uneven bed. Over extrusion and or poor bed leveling and very little filament extrudes out of the nozzle or not at all. You can mitigate over extrusion with the flow setting in the Cura slicer and the extrusion multiplier in the Prusa slicer. Cutting the Bowden tube perfectly perpendicular is a complicated task. The best way I found is to slide in a regular heat break throat and cut it with a box cutter. Or or have a 3D printed jig that grips the bone tube very well for making a flush cut. I 3D printed one but it wasn't that great. There's one hidden problem that may drive you completely mad when the heat break throat connecting the heat sink and the heat block together is not properly tightened and it seems tight when cold because all the oozed cold filament. But as it heats up it becomes loose just enough to fail your 3D print or they will not print as you know they used to print. One thing you may want to know is that some 3D printers do not extrude filament if the nozzle is not at a certain temperature. I fell for this myself and someone pointed that out. I thought that the stepper controller was dead and I was about to buy a new motherboard for my 3D printer. Stay tuned for the next video which is gonna be the first layer.